This is a production of Florida State University. Hello and welcome to this special edition of FSU Headlines coming to you from the campus of Florida State University. I'm your host, Mark Vaughn. Happy New Year and thanks for joining us. 2020 was a tough year but also a successful year for Florida State. While dealing with all the disruptions of a global pandemic, FSU still managed to earn a top status as a public university. Florida State University is one of the nation's top 20 public institutions. That's according to U.S. News & World Report's annual college rankings. U.S. News & World Report ranks Florida State number 19 among all public universities in the country. And it's the second consecutive year that Florida State has placed in the top 20. I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of the faculty members. I'm proud of the great students that we've attracted over the last several years. You know, 62,000 students applied to go to Florida State University last year. I think that's a reflection of where we are, uh, the prestige that the university has earned over the years. And uh, I couldn't be prouder of our entire team, particularly our faculty and our students. Last March, Florida State University rose to the challenge of transitioning 42,000 students into a new era of remote learning in just two weeks. Here's how one of the faculty members did it in their class. It used to be common for grandparents to sell their house after retiring and then move to a smaller house in a warmer climate. I normally teach in this room, HCB 101. It holds 500 something students. Uh, it usually has in a, in a normal class day between, well, for a 500 student class, around 400 students in it. And for a 300 student class, it might have 200 something students in it. All the faculty here have gone to great lengths to make sure that the things that we would normally make available to students are still available to them. We're switching almost everything we did before online in one format or another. Now I'm just doing the same thing, except the students aren't here. Of course, they'll adapt quickly. They're young, they're um, technologically savvy for the most part. They're used to watching lots of stuff online. They're used to um, FaceTime and other forms of online communication they'll be fine adjusting to this. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult for them at first to think of this as primarily a learning mechanism and not just a communication tool, uh, but they'll catch on and they'll adapt. It's going to be different and it's going to be more difficult. Uh, it's going to take all of us time to adjust to doing that, but I know we're all going to try our hardest to do that. As you can imagine, moving all Florida State University's academic courses to online distance learning and other alternative distribution methods was an unprecedented task. But that wasn't the only big change that needed to be made to keep FSU running full speed ahead. Florida State created new ways to help its students continue to learn and thrive remotely, from virtual FSU, a new online hub for student services and engagement opportunities, to launching a COVID-19 relief effort for its students. The university has rallied in a short amount of time all throughout the year 2020. To help identify positive COVID-19 cases on campus, Florida State University transformed a campus parking garage into a testing site last summer. The drive-through and walk-through testing for faculty, staff, and students was a crucial step in making testing more widely available to the FSU community. Watch this. Well, there are a lot of building blocks for the kids to come back, and so this is one of the building blocks for our staff, our faculty, others right now to be tested so we can have some baseline for where we are so that when, they, when the kids do come back and we have a lot more to test, we'll be in, in a, good, a good position. Our first and foremost goal is to make this a safe place, as safe as we can, given the circumstances we're living under today. But I think this helps us put us in a, in a good position to bring our, our students back, have our faculty teach, and that we have a safe environment for everybody. That's really what we want, not only for us, but for our community also. And we're working with a lot of our community leaders to do the same thing, and they're, they're responding very favorably. Testing and the knowledge you get from the test is really the power we need to ensure safe reopening for faculty and staff. So we're happy to process the test for Florida State University, provide test kits, ensure the results are back timely uh, so the university can open safely. Well, first, it's really important that colleges resume face-to-face -face learning. And a very important part of this, first, is understanding what we can do to control the spread of COVID-19. 
wear a mask, practice social distancing, and then also, if you have symptoms or have any concerns at all, get tested. So it's terrific that FSU has this testing site that all students and faculty can take advantage of. Florida State then transitioned to on-campus testing to the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center, which served thousands of students, faculty, and staff over the course of the fall semester. So when a student arrives to the Tucker Center, what they need to do is actually bring a form of identification. That could be a state driver's license, military ID, or even their FSU ID. Um, when they arrive, they actually just come in through an identified entrance. Uh, once they come there, they come into our first station, which is the registration table, and that's where we verify that they had registered for the test prior to arriving. What they do next is uh, they move on to what we call the pickup station. That's where a prepackaged uh, uh, test is actually prepared for them. It's got the student's name, and then following that, then they move into the so testing B station. As you're going to follow the gold arrows, go down the station with At the testing station, they go uh, through one of four different sites. We have a health care provider. They'll walk the students through a self-swabbing process. Actually very uh, uh, comfortable. The swab just goes into the, just inside the nose. Uh, we guide them through that process, packaging up their specimen, and then dropping it off at a collection point. If you're registered, it's a, simply an issue of walking in, showing your ID picking up your collection tube, going through the testing station, dropping it off at the drop-off point or the collection point, and then exiting the building. And in most cases, we can probably get them out in about five or six Thank minutes. You. Have a great day, okay? Testing is still available on campus. You can schedule your appointment at uhs.fsu.edu. Well, Florida State University saw many historic changes in 2020. Perhaps one of the most significant was the transition to virtual commencement ceremonies last spring. Florida State normally hosts four separate commencement ceremonies at the end of the spring semester. This time, it was condensed into a single virtual ceremony. The celebration incorporated many of the traditional customs associated with the usual on-campus commencement exercises, including the opening processional to pomp and circumstance and the official conferring of degrees. The virtual ceremony also included a commencement address by Mark Ziegler, a teaching professor from the FSU School of Communication who normally reads the names of each graduate during the commencement ceremonies. Try to have as your goal to lighten the load for others. In each conversation, help others to see the possibilities. Take each opportunity to offer a hand, a smile. Be kind to your cashier, your server, your children, your parents and grandparents, your colleagues, your neighbors. If you can reach the realization that the best way to live life is to focus on those around you, to build them up, to encourage them, then my lesson is you can make it. We can survive, you can survive, you can thrive, you will succeed. Florida State University, help me learn this. I hope it has done the same for you. It has done the same for you. I just know it. Please take this degree and find ways of making the world a better place. Develop the immunization. Argue the important court case. Write the new symphony or novel. Teach the new third grader. And counsel the suffering. And be kind. Always be kind to everyone. Always. Florida State has since hosted two more virtual commencement ceremonies to recognize the class of 2020. The ceremonies were streamed on the university's website and social media channels. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, Florida State University unveils a new sciences building and observatory. We take another look at these state-of-the-art facilities when FSU Headlines continues in just a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines, I'm Mark Vaughn. Well, after four years in the making, Florida State University's vision for a modern Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Science building was realized in 2020. We took an inside look at the new building to explore what the new learning and teaching hub offers to students and faculty. This building is the highest point on campus. Yes. The top of the building is the highest point on campus. 
It's basically the building, it's a seven-story building. The building has a number of things that we, we see as very important for outreach, and as a consequence with that outreach, we can attract more students to, uh, to come to our programs. One demonstration project that we have is the Smart Flower. That uh, is a demonstration project that we can show how much power you can get just from the sun. So there's, there is an anemometer there and the thing will uh, fold by itself when the wind speed is more than 30 miles per hour. The second uh, one is uh, we have a seismometer so that measures uh, movement of the earth, a teeny movements it can measure, so it can measure earthquakes. And on the sixth floor we have a basically a teaching and research deck uh, that we can instrument that, uh, so we can make measurements of the atmosphere. On this roof we can set up experiments uh, that faculty has and that is mostly on that, that gated area there and then out here we'll have meteorology classes so students can work with the, uh, with the instrumentation that observes atmospheric parameters and set the instruments up and do studies like that. On the sixth floor we also have what we call a map room and that map room is basically is a, a TV wall where we have 20 uh, scre TV screens that we use for mapping the atmosphere. So you can have different layers of the atmosphere as you go up and, sh and, uh, and looking at the, at the screens and then different parameters in the atmosphere you can have along like that. The wet labs that we have, they're modular, so you can reconfigure them very easy as the needs of, uh, of the PI might change. In the building we have several large paintings donated by Paul Lee that were uh, painted by his wife, uh, Gabrielle Lee. These paintings are kind of an abstract impression or expression. The pigments that are used for the paints are mineral pigments, so they don't, they don't fade in the sun. It's very exciting because basically this will grow our program, that will attract more students, that will attract more funding. We can teach people the basic geosciences, but also some practicalities about solutions towards uh, present day world problems that are related to geosciences. Another addition to Florida State's campus was an observatory constructed by FSU's physics department. We headed to the top of Doak Campbell Stadium to explore the new modern facility. Astronomy to me is it's really about our origin story, right? How do we get here? And our technology today is advanced to the point where we can start to answer these questions. Yeah, so it's a very exciting time we're living in. We're here on top of the football stadium at the newly constructed FSU Observatory. So we have a new telescope built on one of the terraces and we are going to use it to look at wonderful things in the night sky above Tallahassee. So the telescope is a 17-inch telescope, so we've been able to look at objects as close to home as the moon and as far away as supernova from neighboring galaxies. We can use this telescope to do science, but that's not what it's designed for. We're going we're gonna to use it for teaching mostly. So a lot of us, when we picture astronomers, we picture someone sitting at a telescope looking through the eyepiece all night. But the thing is, astronomy isn't really done that way anymore. Now we use high-tech cameras and computers, so we remotely control a lot of equipment. There's a lot of really interesting um, electronics and technology that goes into telescopes. So this is also a chance for students to see how um, astronomy is done nowadays. The idea is so that students get familiar with how telescopes work. Before they go on and use the big telescopes, where time is very limited. Um, here they, they're allowed to um, experiment with lots of different ideas, you know, so that's, that's very valuable for a student to have. It's been really exciting. It's been a really cool opportunity for me as a grad student to um, engage with the community and kind of bring astronomy um, more into the FSU campus. And so we're hoping to yeah, incorporate this with a lot of the undergraduate classes. And so we're going to open it up to all the astronomy classes and basically give access to the telescope so everyone can uh, use it to explore their interest in astronomy. This year also saw the beginning of a partnership between two institutions known for their education, research, and medical innovation. It's a powerful partnership designed to transform Florida's health care future. Thank you so much. We, we really, really appreciate this opportunity. And knowing about the Mayo Clinic for so many years and then knowing I, my love for Florida State to bring the two together is just absolutely incredible. It's a great collaboration and I, I couldn't be prouder of it. Uh, cultures are, are so similar, you know, uh, the, 
values that they have here, the values we have at Florida State, all are gonna make a difference, I think, in the lives of a lot of folks in the future. FSU is ingrained in the very DNA of Florida, uh, and we need, to, uh, we need to establish an ecosystem. We cannot continue to work in isolation. Uh, the new world requires networking, working together in teams, uh, and so the opportunity of working with a top tier academic institution like Florida State really helps Mayo Clinic establish a network of relationships within the state, and again with the principal aim of attracting and retaining top talent to our region. What we're doing here is really focusing on the education and we're, we're starting small and we're building a wonderful relationship and I think that that brings tremendous value to Tallahassee but we're also bringing the value of FSU into Jacksonville. So I really see this as mutually beneficial and um, it falls right in line with the type of work that I have done in medtech startups before my time at FSU. Nothing is, is uh, as good for you as a great brand and I think our FSU brand in the last few years has really improved in terms of our academic uh, reputation, moving up to number 18, for example. Uh, it's making a difference in the kind of students and the kind of faculty and staff we're able to uh, recruit and retain. This is only gonna make it better because Mayo is Mayo. Uh, you know, that name is known around the world and, and fully respected by everyone. So it's gonna be, I think, uh, an amazing partnership for both of us. Part of the collaboration, Florida State has developed a biomedical entrepreneurship certificate program, and that's open to both FSU students and Mayo Clinic employees. Well, last fall, FSU Panama City established a new scholarship to help high-achieving students reach their educational goals. Take a look at this. It's a great time to be a student, a faculty member, a staff member here at Florida State University. Right here in Panama City, we have a campus of a top 20 public research university. You know, here we talk a lot about the FSU PC promise. And today we're going to add a fifth component to the FSU PC promise. Today we're making our commitment to student success even more meaningful and more powerful. It's important that students be able to focus on their academics and not worry about uh, the financial burden of going to college to get their undergraduate degree. We're saying focus on your academics and worry less about your finances. I'm pleased to announce the establishment of the FSU Promise Scholarship. This scholarship will provide free tuition and fees from students from Northwest Florida whose combined student and family income is $50,000 or less, or who are Pell eligible. To learn more about how to apply, call the admissions office at FSU PC or email admissions at pc.fsu.edu. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, Seminole Athletics faces new challenges in 2020. We'll show you how student athletes, coaches, and the marching chiefs remained resilient when FSU Headlines continues in just a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm your host, Mark Vaughn. As the public health threat of COVID-19 began to spread throughout the nation in the early months of 2020, the NCAA Board of Directors was forced to make a tough decision for all of college athletics. Today, NCAA President Mark Emmert and the Board of Governors canceled the Division I men's and women's 2020 basketball tournaments, as well as all remaining winter and spring NCAA championships. This decision is based on the evolving COVID-19 public health threat. With this announcement, all NCAA collegiate sports nationwide were officially canceled, and with that, so too were the national championship goals of FSU's student-athletes. Well, when the announcement was canceled, um, you know, for me, I still believe that we had so much in us um, going into the NCAA tournament, and you know, at basketball, like, you're working year-round, you're working hard year-round, so like it's like preparing for something and then it not even happening. Um, that was a big blow. It was devastating. Uh, that day, when I think about it, I, it was kind of like our career was just come to a complete stop. My heart broke for our seniors because all of the unknown, um, it really got to us and they 
thought that their last year at FSU was ripped away from them without any control or any say. We were all like frustrated, uh, sad, angry. I mean, there was plenty of emotions, but at the end of the day, it was for our own safety, the coach's safety, the players, and everybody. So we understand. Going from relentless training in the pursuit of a national championship to no longer having that end goal be an option, the athletes were able to learn an important lesson and gain perspective, even when it seemed all hope was lost. Staying in the sports world, they saw some tragic news in 2020 with the loss of Michael Ojo. The former Florida State Center tragically died at the age of 27 of a heart attack during a training session abroad. The Atlantic Coast Conference honored the beloved athlete with a special tribute. Watch this. Michael Ojo, the seven footer, jumping for Florida State. Take one. And yeah, he up. controlled the tip. Okay, here we go. Ojo for two. Ojo shook my hand for the game. It was like me shaking my two year old. 12 hand. Florida State bench, just how big it is. You should see the size yep, difference. Yep, yep. It is yep. unbelievable when you're on the court. A man masquerading as a mountain, I would say Michael Ojo. <laughs> definitely. A masquerading as a man. Yeah. I'm a big man in the paint, you know. That's my house and I own the paint. Coming down there, you're going to have some trouble with me. Ojo is 7'1, 304 pounds. Michael is a unique physical specimen. He has a physique that most people would love to have. Hard working, tough, all the things you want, he has. Them. Hey, go, Joe. You either go left hand jump hook or a turnaround on this side of the middle. Mix it up. You got to dislodge people to get your shot up in this game. I'm so thankful for the opportunity. You know, there's a lot of kids back home that will do anything, you know, just to have that chance to come over here and play basketball, go to school for food. Michael Ojo is over seven feet tall with size 22 shoes. When he arrived at Florida State, he still could not find footwear to fit. Got here, I was wearing size 18 on 9th grade, you know, and my feet it was hurt. And I talked to Coach, he was like, hey, we'll do something. And he made sure he talked to the right people, get Nike to make me a custom-made shoe now that, that I wear comfortably. At the time they made the shoes for us, Michael Ojo had the only pair of custom-made tennis shoes from the ground up that Nike made for anyone in basketball. There's a machine in China that does nothing but make Ojo's shoes for us. Ojo's shoes are big, but his personality is even bigger. Thank you so much. He's one of the most popular guys on campus. One of my buddies on campus is a PhD student. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. What up, skinny boy? Up, Michael could run for student body president and probably could win by a landslide. He's so appreciative of everything that goes on. They do a good job, you know, keep everywhere clean for us. Yeah. They work so hard every day, make sure we have something to eat. He's just nice and gracious and patient with any and everybody. You gotta have defense. Yeah, you gotta have defense. Probably. I like the fact that you made the first one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? Good. Yes, yeah. yes. I remember when he first got here, the first thing he said to me, he said, my mother just told me she wanted me to be a good boy. He never fails to take time with any and everybody. Hey, my brother. Yes, sir. Can you help me with something to eat? Oh, food? Yeah. Oh, you can that right there? I don't have no money on me. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Let me see if I have a little... I just, I just want to get me something to eat. Thank you, my brother. I need that, my brother. All right. I'll come to see you, Thank please. you. Please do. To be a student athlete is not just for the sport. You have other responsibilities as well. You, know? you have to be a good role model. Try to give back to the people, you know? Pass it on. Pass it forward to others. I'm so thankful for the privilege to be on this team, to be, to be part of this team, you know. Just to be part of this society, this environment, these people, this family. The Seminole family. I'm a Seminole forever. Since we my home, away from home now. Always come back, always. He's a gracious person and extremely appreciative for the opportunities that he's had since he's been here. That's how he's represented his family our school, our program. He might have came here as a good boy, 
but he's, he's leaving as a good man. Early in the year 2020, before COVID-19, changed a lot of things. Florida State University's legendary symbols Osceola and Renegade joined the FSU Marching Chiefs and University President John Thrasher at the Seminole Tribe of Florida's annual Brighton Field Day and Rodeo. Welcome everybody to the 82nd Annual Field Day. Glad to have you here. Hope you enjoy yourself. Take the time to learn about us as we are a unique individual uh, people. Uh, and we're here with some students as well as faculty and staff members just to honor their tribe um, and the history that they have with our university. We're here to uh, educate you on what we do here and teach you about our language and what we do as a people. Uh, thank you for coming out. We appreciate you. I think that a lot of students are curious about the relationship we have with the tribe, so coming to events like this is one way to continue to further that relationship we have with them. We have such a uh, great connection with the university and the Sumo tribe, and uh, just to see some kind of representation and actual involvement with the band and Renegade team, uh, it's always great to see and uh, it's definitely appreciated. And I know it makes it even better, you know, because I can actually brag on my university a little bit. <laughs> Um, it was really interesting to be able to see a lot of the culture aspects from not only the food to the rodeo, um, as well as the parade. Thank you guys so much for coming. It means a lot to me and Avi. It's been a lot of fun. We've been walking around a lot, seeing a lot of the vendors, eating some of the food, and getting to engage with the students as well as members of the tribe. The relationship, being able to flourish um, on the Seminole Tribe property is also very cool from our perspective. I also think getting to hear their native tongue and them speaking it during their parade was really interesting to me because it's something that we've never been exposed Okay, that's going to do it for this special edition of FSU Headlines, but remember you can always keep up with Florida State news online at news.fsu.edu. For everyone here at Florida State University, I'm Mark Vaughn. I thank you for joining us. Stay safe and healthy this new year, and we'll see you next time.